Hey, welcome back to week number six in the Becoming Challenge. I'm your host, Katie Horner of the FlamingoAdvantage.com. Super excited to have you with us this week. We're talking about uh, taking massive action, taking more action than we've ever taken, and how that can sometimes look like less action. We'll dive into that today, and I wanted to just welcome you. If this is the first time you've seen this, we've got five weeks that happened before this. We'd love to have you watch the whole series. You can find it for free on our YouTube channel, and if you want to participate and actually turn in the homework, uh, we're uh, sharing some prizes for that as we go through this challenge and you just need to sign up at the link uh, somewhere in the notes for this video and you can get uh, all of the homework assignments each week as you go through this challenge. It's not a dated challenge, you can start anytime, but this is the sixth week. We're in the middle of the second month out of three. It's a 90 day challenge, essentially a 12 week challenge. This week we're talking about taking massive action, building on everything that we've done so far. And I'll tell you the whole goal of this is to become who God is becoming us. And you know, a lot of times we think about, oh, our 10 year goals or when I retire or when the kids are out of the house, this, that, and the other. And that's great, but what if you didn't have to wait so long for those things to happen? What if you could already become sooner the person who is uh, doing those things, who has accomplished those things, who has then opened bigger doors because of what you've accomplished? in order to do greater things for the kingdom of God faster. And this is about learning to become who God is becoming us. And we're using that verse from Philippians 3, 13 and 14 about laying aside the weights of the past, weighing, laying aside the things that used to bog us down so that we can more easily press forward toward the things that God has for us. And this week, part of what God has had for us is that we were able to host an entrepreneur couples retreat in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And I'll just just give this a swing around. You can see the beautiful background here. We're still at the venue location where we spent the weekend. And it was just amazing to see what God did with the couples that attended this week. And we're getting ready to move on to the next activity that God has for us and excited about that, but still enjoying and, and being refreshed. I wanted to get this video done for you while we were still in this beautiful location and uh, just thrilled with, with all that God is doing in the hearts and in the businesses and in the families, the marriages of Christian entrepreneurs and what a joy it is to be a part of that. Some of the folks that were with us are members of our Business with God Mastermind for Christian Entrepreneurs. And if you want more information about that, there's info along with this video as well. We'd love to have you be a part of that. And others are part of other trainings that we've been a part of through the years. And it was just a sweet, sweet time of fellowship and growing together as a couple and also growing in our understanding of what God has for us and our impact in the world. And so just really thrilled about what God's doing. If you want more info about those kind of retreats, also just let us know and we'll put you on the list uh, for when the next one happens. So this week, talking about becoming who we are becoming. And last week we talked about stripping something out, saying no, giving us more power to say yes to the right things, yes to the better things. And you know, the more honest we are about who we are becoming and the more honest we are about who God is making us into, I believe the more we get to say no to things in order to say yes to the right things. I think it means that often we do less instead of more because now we're focused on the right things. And one of my favorite verses of all time is Ecclesiastes 2.24. And the Lord just showed this verse to me a few years ago. And it says, there is nothing better for a man, for a human, than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his work. For this also is of the hand of God. And when I heard that verse, I thought, wow, how come I've never heard that verse expounded on before? There's nothing better than that we eat and drink and find enjoyment in our work. For this also is of the hand of God. But you know, way back in the Garden of Eden, at the beginning of everything, God gave us things to do to work. He gave us the garden. He gave us these things. He gave man the power to have dominion over those things, to take charge of those things and to make them better. He knew we would enjoy our work. And then he gave us the command to rest on the seventh day because he knew if we didn't, we'd just enjoy it so much that we wouldn't ever rest and we'd burn out. And so how good is our God that he gave us 
that. He gave us work. He gave us the command to enjoy our work. He gave us a command to rest so that we could continue to enjoy our work. And this is what it's all about, becoming who you are becoming so that you can enjoy the work that God has given you. And it goes hand in hand with the New Testament scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. It's the eating and drinking and the doing again. Like why? To enjoy it and to do it for his glory. It goes hand in hand, those two things. And so having a God possible goal, something he is becoming you to do, it may be something, it should be something actually that is bigger than you, that you can't really see a way possible to do right now. But you know, with man, it seems impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so your God possible goal that we ask you to set at the beginning of this challenge, something you want to achieve in a shorter amount of time, something you want to be the person who can do or accomplish, that is something that really feels impossible right now with your current skills, with your current resources, your current team, maybe the current way that you're doing things and operating, it feels impossible. And that's why we choose those God possible goals because we know that God can up level our skills. He can up level our team. He can up level our resources. He can help us think outside the box in ways that we've never thought before about how to accomplish these things for his glory. God possible goals force us to redefine who we are and how we're doing things and sometimes why we're doing things so that we can accomplish more. You know, as I think about my own goals, a lot of times I put number goals. I put quantifiable goals in place and nothing wrong with quantifiable goals. I mean, people have said for years and years, if you're gonna make a goal, it needs to be something you can measure, something you can quantify, right? And yet that sometimes gets me bogged down because I'm like, oh, well, if I set a goal for X number of members in the membership or X number of clients or X number of dollars earned this year, like I can't, I can't control who pays me. I can't control who buys the membership. And so there's always sort of this internal struggle between those kinds of quantifiable goals and the actual actions to make them happen. Because at the end of the day, like I can do all the marketing, I can do all the inviting, I can do all the, the sales calls and the free consultations and all those things but I can't force anyone to buy. So is that really a goal that I should be setting? Or should my goal be to be the leading voice across multiple platforms in equipping Christians to be able to have a business that is in service of their life and calling, to be able to have a business that allows them to see the secular marketplace as just as important of a ministry as someone in quote, full-time ministry. That's my goal. How do I become the leading voice for Christian entrepreneurs in the secular marketplace within the next 90 days, within the next year, within the next three years? How do I do that? That is something that I can create goals to make happen. That is something I can take actions for. That is something we can think outside the box. How do we get in front of more people? How do we share this with a bigger audience? How do we reach those Christian entrepreneurs who feel alone, who feel misunderstood by the church, who feel like they can't bring their faith into their business, who feel like they're less than because they ended up working in a secular environment rather than in a church building. And we want to be the one that encourages them. We want to be the one that helps them to see the truth of God's word, that if you're doing what God has called you to do, that is your best worship. If you're doing it right where he called you to do it, chances are 85 to 95% of us are going to be in the secular world because he put us here as lights to the world, lights to the Gentile, lights to go out into the world with the gospel, not to bring the world into the church so they can have the gospel. And so learning to put goals on here that are things that you can take actions for, the God possible goal. And so for you, think about the number of goals that you've set and then think, how could I make that more of an authority goal? How could I make that more of a visibility goal? Those are things that I can control and start thinking outside the box about how to do that. We just had uh, that couples retreat that I mentioned this weekend. Our friends, Clint and Jessica Nobles were here. It's such a blessing to fellowship with them. But in one of the sessions that Clint and Jessica led, Clint made a statement about how we have these goals and a lot of times we just set them and then it's like, okay, Lord, make it happen, right? Like we sit back on our hands and just like, let's see it happen. You helped us set this goal and now we're waiting on you to do the work, right? And nothing wrong with waiting on God and waiting on him for clarity and, and getting affirmation for the steps he wants you to take. However, there's also nothing wrong with brainstorming 
what is helping you reach that goal? What is hurting you reach that goal? And that's what Clint was explaining is that when you set that goal, then you say, okay, this is the end result. And then what's hurting us? What's keeping us from reaching that goal? How do we get rid of that? How do we uh, disentangle ourselves from those responsibilities? You know, if this is not going to have anything to do with me reaching this future goal, becoming who I am becoming, accomplishing this thing in the future, then why am I doing it? And how can I offload that or disentangle that myself from that or decommit myself from that so that I can focus on the things that will help? What is helping me reach that goal? What else would help me? How do I reinvent the process or how do I find the the new people and the resources I need to be able to do that? Because often the resources that we have currently, the skills we have currently, the team we have currently are not the team or the skills or the resources that we need to be at that next level. And we have to be willing to ask those hard questions, be willing to cut things out, be willing to prune the tree so that the new growth can happen. I think that's what this week is really all about is taking that massive action, continuing to ask yourself, what's hurting me? What's keeping me from getting to this goal? What is helping me? How do I cut those things out in favor of making room for the good? Asking myself what is truly relevant to that God possible goal and not being distracted by all of those other things. And so we need to have that clear vision. We need to have a vision that is so clear to us that we know what we're going after, to be that leading voice, uh, that leading authority across multiple platforms for entrepreneurs, helping them create a business that is in service of their life and calling, helping them to be able to see and embrace that secular marketplace responsibility as a sacred mission field, as a sacred duty to God who gave you these gifts and abilities and experiences, gave you this audience who needs to see Jesus through what you do, needs to see the excellence with which you serve him and the joy with which you serve him so that you can be a light in the world and advance the kingdom. That's what God put me here for. And you know, ultimately God controls who joins the membership, how many members we grow this to, right? I have dreams of growing it huge. And God is in control of every one of you who say yes to joining that that membership that we have for Christian entrepreneurs. And yet I can see how his big vision can keep us focused on the authority piece and on reaching the new markets and on being in front of new audiences rather than focused on the detailed numbers and getting that next one and that next one and that next one. It also keeps me focused on impact rather than the income, which is also another super important thing. Once that clear vision is there, then you can explain it to your team. Then you can enroll your team in what you want them to do. And then you can find new team if necessary and have them brainstorm. How do we make this happen? If what we've been doing has only gotten us this far, what else could we do? How do we reach that new God possible goal? And then how do I support my team? It's not about me doing it all. It's about me hiring people who are better than me in the areas of things that need to get done and then giving them the support and the ability to be able to do what they need to do so that the team can work together for this and then celebrating our weekly wins. And this is where we're bringing in our homework assignment for this week, writing down and thinking about, again, taking account of the past from the perspective that that has made me who I am now and put me in the position where I can look forward to who God is becoming me to be. How are things different? Or what are the big wins since? You decide which way you wanna go with this. How are things different since? Or what are the big wins since the beginning of this last year, 12 months ago? What about the beginning of this challenge six weeks ago? How are you different? Or what are the wins since six weeks ago? And then how are you different and or what are the wins since the beginning of last week? Those are the things I want you to focus on. Then answer these next two questions. What will you say no to this week? What will that no allow you to say yes to this week to get you closer to that God possible goal? I can't wait to see what you have to send in. We look forward to you participating. All the info is below if you need to sign up to get those homework assignments and be able to have the instructions to reply to us and participate. We'll be giving out some more prizes here soon. I can't wait to see all that you have to share with us this week and see what God is doing in your lives towards your own God possible goal and who he is becoming you to be. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.